Hello everybody, welcome to MySQL QA episode number 4. Today we're going to get into the fun stuff. So if you've missed the first three episodes, uh, what did we talk about? In the first episode we talked all about uh, Linux, about uh, Bash utilities, GNU utilities, uh, and so on. So you might want to go and have a look at that. It's about uh, three and a half hours of uh, pure scripting fun. The second episode was about how to build your MySQL server. So something that you clearly need before uh, you actually get into QA. Uh, it's uh, the MySQL as well as Percona server, it doesn't really matter. It simply shows you how to build the server and get started. The third episode that uh, was just passed uh, was all about uh, playing around with GDB. So again, one and a half hours of in-depth uh, work with GDB. I, I highly recommend that you had a, have a look at all of these three episodes. If, if you haven't yet, uh, go and, um, and and have a check out of those and, uh, and then we can actually get into the more fun stuff and that's uh, trying to produce some bugs and we're pretty good in that. Uh, the other day I did a, a test run for a customer issue that we were seeing and I set up a few threads um, I don't know, it was something like 12 threads I set up uh, and we ran this for 24 hours uh, it was all pQuery and believe it or not but we rounded up at just about 2500 crashes um, in 24 hours so you can see how powerful it is. That's more than 100, 100 crashes per hour. Um, of course, there are duplicates within that, but you know you get a, a good number of bugs. So let's get started with today's episode. So first, we'll have a look at Percona QA. If you've been looking at the previous episodes, uh, you've seen a little bit about that already. But I'll just rehash a bit. Um, then we'll look at BigQuery. What is it? What does it do? What can it do for you? What can it not do for you? Um, Actually, I have to think about what it cannot do for you. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so <clears throat> then we'll have a look at Reducer, which at the moment uh, still lives in the ranch and tree. Um, it's a little bit confusing, but it's because of historical reasons. Um, and thank you, big thank you to uh, the guys at uh, at Oracle for uh, open sourcing Reducer.sh. It's a tool I wrote while I was working at uh, Oracle and uh, they've kindly open sourced it now so that the community can use it. Then uh, there will be a short introduction to each of the BigQuery framework tools, um, but there's quite a bit of it and in the next uh, two episodes there will be a lot more uh, in-depth coverage of those particular tools. Okay, let's get started. So, um, if you haven't branched Percona QA yet, uh, first of all, I recommend that you go to your home directory. Um, you can see I'm there already, but uh, if you don't know how to go to your home directory, of course, it's very straightforward. Uh, CD tilde. And if you haven't installed BZR, you would uh, execute something like this, or if you're on Ubuntu or something like that. Uh, you go sudo apt-get install bzr. So in my case I don't need to execute this because I've got uh, bazaar installed already. So you can go bazaar branch Launchpad Percona QA. So what does this do? Um, it uses the tool BZR, which is a, 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 a subversion tool. It branches a particular tree. The tree branching its branching is Percona QA, and it retrieves this of Launchpad. So this LP is just a, a straightforward matter a way of pointing at Launchpad. So once you execute this, um, uh, it will download Percona QA, and then you can simply swap into it. The other thing you will need is, uh, and we'll do this one live, let me just uh, make sure that I do not have, no, I do not have it available. Okay, so I'm going to branch this, and again this time it's uh, 
this time it's branching from uh, Launchpad again uh, and it's branching the tree Ranjan. Now <coughs> Ranjan is the RQG or random query generator originally created by Philip Stoof. Uh, we, we've stopped using uh, RQG altogether now simply because BigQuery is so uh, very powerful and um, there is various ways in which we can do uh, whatever we want to do in BigQuery rather than using RQG which was quite slow. To give you a comparison with the number I showed you before, um, if we let uh, RQG run for 24 hours with you know eight threads or something like that then it would be able to produce maybe 10 to 20 bucks uh, so compare that with the 2500 bucks that we've uh, produced with pre-query in a, in a similar sort of run uh, then you can get an idea as to you know speed uh, how does this uh, happen um, so uh, RQG is written in quite a slow language while uh, BigQuery is written in C++, uh, quite a recent C++ um, version 11. And so uh, the number of queries that can be executed per second is very high in BigQuery. Okay, so you can see this is uh, branched here. So the only thing that we still access from Ranchin and it's in the util directory is reducer.sh. Um, and that's the reducer script that I was mentioning earlier. So uh, that can be used for reducing uh, test cases. We'll have a look into that later. For the moment, I'm just going to uh, remove this. Okay, so let's swap into Percona QA and have a look at the directory here. So there's quite a bunch of files and uh, maybe even a few more on my system that I've just been using as temporary files. But you can see here there's quite a few uh, pQuery executables uh, scripts uh, .sh uh, that are there. And the most important one is uh, pQuery run and there's a few other ones. So um, let me give you a short idea of what pQuery is uh, and does. Okay, so start by picturing that you have uh, some sort of MySQL server. So MySQL daemon is running on some server. Now, when pQuery starts, uh, and let's just uh, picture pQuery like this, when pQuery starts, it will access um, a flat SQL text file. And in that SQL file, it will have many lines of uh, SQL. Now, straight away, what's important to know, notice here is that each of those lines should be an individual statement all by itself. So, if you have something like uh, create table t1 something like this, then that would work because it's all on one line. However, if you try and do something like this, it would not work. And the reason, um, okay, that's just slightly showing incorrectly here, but you get what I mean. The reason why that wouldn't work is because um, all the statements are read in a random fashion by BigQuery. And BigQuery then executes those statements one by one against the server. Now that could be uh, completely random. So, you know, this statement might be executed there, this statement might be executed there, and this statement might also be executed again there. So, why is this uh, so powerful? Well, if your SQL file quality is quite high and you execute uh, this against MySQL D, then MySQL D sooner or later is going to run into a problem, something that the programmers didn't foresee would happen. And when that happens, you get a crash or an assert. 
So how often does this happen? Uh, very often. Uh, MySQL D is reasonable quality and yet at the same time uh, there's quite a number of bugs in there. Even if sometimes a bug gets fixed, uh, it still doesn't mean that it might be fixed in all the locations where it's applicable to. Uh, I've seen situations where two or three or four different code paths within the MySQL server were fixed and still the bug showed uh, in different locations simply because it was something that the developers had overseen. So you got all these SQL statements here, so we mentioned that they have to be high quality. Now this was one problem with RQG. Uh, with RQG uh, everything was created more or less randomly on the fly, which is great for random spread coverage, meaning you get very random uh, uh, SQL statements. However, there was a high rate of failure uh, of the statements and statements might become very long and you know maybe not, not necessarily uh, causing crashes and asserts. And that's seen by the, the number, right? So we, we had between 10 and 20 crashes in 24 hours between 2,500 crashes in 24 hours. So how can we ensure that this uh, SQL quality is very high? Um, we use a tool that's called uh, mtr to sql.sh and what this does is it uses the mtr test cases that are available with uh, every release of uh, MySQL both, you know, uh, Gonna server as well as uh, MySQL server as well as MariaDB server. So all the test cases that the developers have developed, which is already very high quality SQL, and we have assembled all of this SQL into a single file, um, and we've done so for a Pagona server as well as uh, MySQL server as well as MariaDB server, and we've put all of that code together in one flat file and uh, then pQuery will randomly take uh, information from this file and execute it, uh, SQL statements from this file and execute it against MySQL D. Uh, we get a fairly high percentage, uh, anywhere from 10 to uh, probably 25 percent, sometimes it might be higher, uh, of, of successful queries uh, and that still might not seem very high but it's probably a lot higher than what uh, ArcG is doing. Okay, so that's a very uh, broad introduction. Now if we have a look you can actually see the, the tools here. So that's the tool that uh, compiles uh, MTR uh, test cases to SQL and you can see there's a fair bit there but I can go into that a bit more in one of the next episodes. Um, we've also uh, had a look at a pQuery run uh, so this is the actual main pQuery wrapper which sits around the pQuery binary and in the pQuery subdirectory um, there is pQuery MD, MariaDB, pQuery MS, MySQL server and pQuery PS, Pagona server. So each of these three has been compiled using their own client libraries and each of these has its own um, strengths. Uh, the way I want to put that is with um, the various versions of pQuery. Let me have a look um, at this for example. You can see here that each of those uh, has quite a different size um, uh, as to the included client libraries uh, within them. So MySQL is the biggest, uh, then MariaDB, and the smallest is Pagona server. Uh, it seems like we have a very compact client library. Okay, so that was a, a very broad introduction to pQuery, what it, uh, what it is and, and what it does. Um, it's been very successful. We've logged several hundred bugs to uh, Oracle, we've logged uh, under 100 bucks uh, to Percona server and um, we haven't really uh, logged any to, to MariaDB. Um, it would be great if, uh, if those guys could get, uh, get into it too and, and tell us uh, what, what they're seeing on their end. Okay, so in the next episode we'll have a more in-depth uh, review of uh, 
the BigQuery run etc tools um, and for the moment I'm just going to go back here and to remember that we downloaded um, Ranchan as well, RKG for the reducer tool. So this is the reducer tool. Uh, there's a lot of code in here, uh, and all this program does. It's specifically being generated. It's 3,000 lines of code, simply for reducing test cases in a in a very automated and, and quality fashion. Okay, so that was a quick introduction to Percona QA, you remember now how to get it, to pQuery, what it does, uh, to Reducer, Reducer reduces test cases for you, and uh, all of these tools will be covered more in depth in the next two episodes. Okay, that was only 15 minutes of fun, I'll see you in the next two episodes for uh, getting started on pQuery.